Welcome to Experiences You Should Have, your how-to guide for amazing experiences. This is Gail, and this week is going to be slightly different. I am not interviewing anybody for today's show. However, I am sharing a personal experience I had that I think you should have, which is spending at least 24 to 48 hours or more in London. I got to go to London a few months ago, and it was my first time to Europe. I know, I've traveled to many different places, but I had never been to Europe. Uh, Back in my college days, I didn't have a lot of money, and so I, I did things closer to home, yet I was still adventurous. And the exchange rate in Europe was not great and it's still not awesome coming from the US but but I was able to score an amazingly cheap flight on Virgin Atlantic I found a $500 round trip ticket to London from Seattle just pretty amazing when flying to London actually is cheaper than flying to Florida or even California. So it's it's pretty amazing. And I feel like when you see a deal like that online, you might as well just go for it. Because once you buy the plane ticket, with if you have not canceled within 24 hours, you are going on that trip. And I love experiences, as you know. And I wanted to give you a few of the highlights from my trip that you could replicate on your own. So you fly into London and you're going to be bombarded by multiple people to take the Heathrow Express. The Heathrow Express costs a lot more than riding the tube. So I highly recommend riding the tube instead of the Heathrow Express to get to where you're going. Uh, Just ask any official where you can go get an Oyster card and put some money on that. I was there for a week and for a week, $50 was perfect for a solid seven days. However, if you're just there for one day or two days, uh, maybe... uh, $15 or something like that if you're going to be taking the tube everywhere. And then if you want to know how to take the train system, then pop it into Google Maps where you are headed to and then click on trains and then it will tell you where you need to walk, what train to get off on, and then where you need to walk to next and then catch the next train. And if you look at the map of the tube, which is their underground train system, you realize it's it's pretty easy to understand. So you don't have to get too hung up on it. And it's really exciting to, to ride the tube. One of my favorite parts about riding the tube everywhere was getting to see the people of London. And I must say the people in London, at least that I saw, were extremely well put together, which I appreciate. I, I appreciate when someone takes the time to look nice. I I remember seeing a man on the tube and he was well dressed. He had this suit, he had these beautiful cufflinks on, and he was carrying a bouquet of flowers. And I and I asked him where he was going, and he told me he was going to his nephew's birthday party. And that that is pretty incredible. That this man dressed up so nicely, he went the extra mile, even put on beautiful cufflinks and got flowers. I was extremely impressed. And I live in Oregon and our version of dressing up is like a Patagonia jacket and jeans and maybe a ponytail. So we don't dress up very often. We don't even dress up where I work. So I I, I really did appreciate it. So I highly recommend... (laughs) going and doing some people watching and ask people where they're going and strike a conversation with a stranger with someone on the tube. (music) 
So if you only have 24 hours or 48 hours in London, I highly recommend getting tickets to go up in the Shard. I know it's super touristy, but it's like 71 stories high and it is beautiful up there. Uh, if you just purchase a ticket to the Shard, it's like 38 pounds. Uh, I had a, something called the London Pass, which for a week, the London Pass was around $170 or 150 pounds. I have to look at the prices exactly. I'll make sure to link to it in the show notes on experiencesyoushouldhave.com which allowed me to get into so many different attractions at no cost. However, if you're just there for a day or two, uh, just price it out if it's better to buy the London Pass or just pay for things a la carte. However, if you, if you do just purchase it, it's about 38 pounds, which is, I don't know if you're going to have to do the conversion depending on how your currency is doing against the pound at that time. And I highly recommend going to the Shard at sunset or right before sunset. And it is so magical to watch London turn from day to night, where you can see the Tower Bridge and see really a 360 degree view of of London. There's there's something about it. There's something that it just makes you feel happy being up there looking down at this just gorgeous city and a, and a very old city. It's the history that you're just seeing right before your eyes is absolutely breathtaking. And up there, there's there's a bar, you can grab a cider or non-alcoholic drink or, or, or whatever it is you're choosing. And you can sip on a mocktail or cocktail as you watch this beautiful sunset uh, great to bring a friend or a date or experience on your own and just plan to kick it up there. After night has fallen on the beautiful city of London, come down the elevator, down the tower, in an elevator full of people who are probably not talking to each other. But why don't you try to spark a conversation in that jam-packed elevator? You never know who you're going to meet. Now you should head for dinner at Tapas de Brindiso, which is near the Shard, and it is amazing Spanish tapas food, and it's it's easy to get to. You're going to be hungry after watching the sunset, and just, just go. I swear your taste buds will be delighted. If you are a meat eater, their Iberico is incredible. I had a complete Harry Met Sally moment when I had this Iberico ham over this like hazelnut puree. It was a very, very small dish. It was a tapa, but my mind was blown completely. Uh, but they do have vegetarian options too. Uh, but scout out the area. There's plenty of good food. London actually has a fantastic food scene and incredible Indian food. Absolutely incredible Indian food. Uh, Dishoom is a great Indian place to eat. I uh, would highly recommend reservations if you want to go to Dishoom. I also found this place called Lahore. And I'll post links to these in the show notes. And Lahore had much cheaper Indian food than Dishoom. And it was absolutely amazing. My dinner from that night is still dancing on my tongue. And then fall asleep wherever you decide to stay. I'm not going to tell you where to stay. And then in the morning, you must head to the Borough Market. It's closed one day a week. Maybe it could be Monday. I'm going to check on that. I'll include it in the show notes. The Borough Market is incredible. It is one of the best food markets I've ever been to in my entire life. They... They had all sorts of food, whether it's like meat pies or oysters with champagne or mussels in a curry sauce or the most incredible melange of mushrooms you have ever seen. 
served with a spelt risotto and some fresh grated Parmesan Reggiano. Oh my goodness. Circus in your mouth. I promise if you love food, you have to go to the borough market. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. And it's not it's not very expensive. Uh, you can eat very well, eat like a king all day. And it is, gosh, incredible. On the weekends, it's definitely much more crowded than it is midweek. And there's more food vendors there on the weekends than midweek. Uh, but you can definitely find incredible food there if you go during the week. And then you have to hit up the tower. It's where the crown jewels are held. And a real live yeoman will actually give the tour there at the tower. And so much has gone at going on at the tower. You have had some of the rich and famous be there and you've had many people tortured at the tower. And you can also see the famous ravens there. So definitely add the tower to your list and hit up the British Museum. The British Museum is by far one of the best museums I have gone to. You can see the Rosetta Stone, mummies, so much stolen treasure. It is, gosh, it's it's just incredible to see things that are so old and rich with history. I I think I could have just walked around there for hours. And I know you don't have much time in London, so you're going to have to keep it moving and make reservations. If you enjoy a cocktail, if you don't enjoy a cocktail, or if you're not of age, then disregard this recommendation. But make a recommend, uh, make a reservation for Mr. Fogg's residence for some tipsy tea. That's right, tipsy tea. It's actually almost half the price of high tea. High tea is very expensive in London, extremely. Uh, many of the prices we saw were 65, 70, 80, and on upwards, which I'm not willing to pay that for tea. I don't care how great the tea or crumpets are. I just can't. I can't do it. I cannot do it. Uh, however, tipsy tea was only, I don't know, it was like $35. Um, you could even go on up there or you could have one cocktail, but they essentially filled a teapot full of a cocktail and served a uh, it's like a little tiered platter full of little sandwiches and cookies and that sort of thing. But the thing about Mr. Fogg's residence is that it was a true experience. You had an old-fashioned piano playing with sheet music, which looked like it was from the 20s or the 30s in front of him. There was a magician going around from table to table, wowing people as they sat there. The air felt like you walked into a 1930s era. People were dressed up, drinking their tea, having a great time, and it just made you want to get up and dance. Even when you walk into the bathroom at Mr. Fogg's residence, uh, you start to hear the story of Mr. Fogg. So Mr. Fogg's residence is based on the book. Slides came from the interior. Mr. Fogg and Sir Francis could see the victim whom two priests were dragging to the outside. At this moment, the crowd was agitated. Highly recommend a read. A and, and, again and when you're the there at Mr. Fogg's the residence, you feel like you're home. You feel like the people sitting around you having tea are your family and friends. There's there's an air about it that's more than just having a drink at a bar. You are there having a drink in a completely different time and space. And I remember just sitting there looking around and feeling like maybe I was on the movie set or a different world somehow and that I was transported. And if I lived in London, gosh, I think I would go here too much. But if you if you do enjoy a cocktail and you want to save some money on high tea, 
definitely hit up Mr. Fox residence. You will not be disappointed. And again, make a reservation. That is about enough that you could do in London for 24 to 48 hours. But those are some nice highlights. Remember to take the tube. Uh, you can also Uber. Lyft was not there when I was there. Uh, that might have changed, but it's much cheaper to take the tube everywhere. And it's just fun to talk to people from all different places because you're now going to meet someone that you would have never met and there may be a story there to uncover. So I hope you guys are enjoying the holiday week if you're here in America. And if you're elsewhere, I hope you're having a great week. And I promise more amazing interviews are to come. And I'll give you a hint. One is on how to dive with great whites will be coming soon. So thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Please tell a friend about experiences you should have. And if you are listening on iTunes or on an iPhone device, please leave a review only if you like the show. If you don't like the show, you did not hear this and uh, but still tell your friends to listen to the show anyways. Thank you again and hope you have a wonderful week.